Now, I don't usually always carry a gimbal around with me because they are big and they are heavy. But this one here might just be an exception. This gimbal here is the Zhiyun Crane M2. Compared to the kind of gimbals I usually use, this one really is quite small. The first thing I wanted to find out about this gimbal is where it comes in in the range of gimbals. And to be honest, I do find it to be in a bit of an awkward position because think of it as a gimbal for mobile devices, but with a higher payload of 720 grams. This gimbal is meant to be the one gimbal for all lightweight cameras. So it's going to work with mobile phones for sure, and it's also going to work with action cameras like GoPros, that's if you can find a reason to put a GoPro on a gimbal. It also works with compact point and shoots, and also lightweight mirrorless cameras. Now compatibility with mirrorless cameras is when it starts to get a little bit tricky. Because it is such a small gimbal with a rather limited payload, it is not going to work with all mirrorless cameras, especially the full frame ones. The kind of mirrorless cameras that it will work with are cameras like the Sony A5000 or A6000 line of mirrorless cameras or something like the Canon EOS M mirrorless cameras with a lightweight lens. So if you do plan on getting one of these, I will highly recommend it that you first check the published list of compatible cameras just to make sure that your camera is indeed going to work with this. I'll leave a link to that PDF down below. But as far as cameras go, I think this gimbal is perfect for the premium point-and-shoot cameras like the Canon G7Xs or the Sony RX100s, which is what I've been using this gimbal with. So this is the RX100 Mark V on here, and on a gimbal like this, not only is the camera's size and form just right, its software is also fully compatible with the gimbal. So that means I'm able to connect the camera to the gimbal directly and wirelessly. As long as your camera is compatible from the Crane M2 handle, you would be able to start and stop recording and also operate the zoom of the camera. So all this is without a single cable running from the gimbal to the camera. Now for the first time, you will need a smartphone running the Crane M2's companion app to facilitate the connection between the camera and the gimbal, but every next time you do it, you will not need the smartphone anymore because it will be able to auto-connect. The Crane M2 package does come included with a phone holder, so you can most definitely use the gimbal with your phone, but as long as you're filming with the official companion app, the Crane M2 actually has one more trick up its sleeve. It's got object tracking, although I do find it to be a bit of a hit or miss if you're trying to get the gimbal to follow a moving subject, now because the gimbal is so small, every time you extend the roll axis to balance it, it's going to knock onto itself when you try and fold the gimbal away. So to fold it in and lock it away, you have to retract the roll axis which messes up your balance. But there's one stopper here that kind of makes up for all of that. You see, when you balance the gimbal for the first time, you use the stopper to mark the end point on the roll axis bar, so the next time you have to set it up again, you just extend the roll axis until it hits that stopper, and then you lock it in, and when I get my camera in there, you know it's balanced. Now I keep calling it a stopper, but Zhiyun actually has a much nicer sounding official name for it, and they're quite appropriately calling it the memory lock, so I just thought I'd put it out there. Now for locking the pan axis, there's a very conventional switch that does the job of locking the pan axis, but for every other axis, the locking mechanism is a bit unorthodox. It uses a series of rails and pins to kind of jam lock all the moving parts. It's a bit difficult to describe, so it's easier to just show you. Now one of my favorite things about this gimbal has to be the grip. It's got a very nice leather texture on the grip and your fingers do rest very naturally on the controls. There's a nice little OLED display as well. Now the battery of this gimbal is built in and non-removable. It takes about two hours to charge up to full and that's going to last you about seven hours. So battery life is not bad, but it's not exactly excellent either. But the good news is it charges via USB-C, which means if it do run out of juice halfway, you can run it off a power bank. Now I suppose I'll end with a few things I wasn't so fond of on this gimbal. The quick release plate attaches to the camera via a thumb screw. Now I get that this is good in the sense that it's a toolless setup, but this is a pretty easy part to lose. Plus if you choose to leave the quick release plate on your camera, then you end up with a weird bump sticking out the bottom of your camera. And I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but if the gimbal detects a foreign force acting on the motors, it sounds a really distressing alarm. 
Now that alarm is actually for reminding you when you accidentally power on the gimbal with the pan lock engaged, which is why it gets triggered when it detects an abnormal amount of force on the motors. I'll give it that it's a very effective reminder for that exact purpose, it's just not the friendliest sound in the world. So who's this gimbal for? The way I see it, it's really more for the person who travels a lot and is constantly on the move. Now I'm not saying that you cannot use this gimbal for serious work, but its small overall footprint, lighter payload, and powering options seem to suggest it's designed for the person who wants to carry a gimbal around with as little bulk as possible. It is a marvelously light gimbal, I'll give it credit for that. The gimbal itself weighs only about as much as a glass of water, but it's only useful as an option for smaller cameras. So those are my thoughts on the Zhiyun Crane M2. I'll leave some purchase links down below if you're interested in picking one up for yourself. And that sums up the review. If you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon for more videos just like this. And I'll see you in the next video. But until then, here's another video of mine YouTube thinks you should watch. Or if you don't like a computer telling you what to watch, here's one of my latest videos.